South Africa's President Jacob Zuma set to begin a two-day state visit to Nigeria. Oil extends gain above $36 a barrel as U.S. drillers cut the number of active rigs to the least in more than six years amid a global glut. Plus, Iran's oil lands in Europe for the first time since sanctions ended. Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you for joining us on Business Incorporated. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwawu. Oil extended gains above $36 a barrel as U.S. drillers cut the number of active rigs to the latest in more than six years amid a global glut. Futures rose as much as 22% in New York and in, in New York and crude in London climbed for a sixth day, the longest rally since November. Rigs targeting oil fell by 8 to 392, declining for an 11th week to the lowest level since December 2009. West Texas Intermediate for April delivery added as much as 80 cents to $36.72 a barrel on the New York Mercantile Exchange and was at $36.45. Brent for May settlement increased as much as 2% to $39.50 a barrel on the London-based Ice Futures Europe Exchange. The global benchmark crude was at a premium of 95 cents to WTI for May. The Monte Toledo oil tanker became the first to deliver Iranian crude into Europe since mid-2012 when Brussels imposed an oil embargo in an attempt to force the Middle Eastern nation to negotiate the end of its nuclear program. Now, the ban was lifted in January as part of a broader deal that ended a decade of sanctions. The Monte Toledo and its companions are the vanguard in the return of Iran into the European Union oil market. Meanwhile, Iranian billionaire Babak Zanjani will appeal his death sentence in an oil fraud case. Zanjani, who has denied all wrongdoing, was accused of embezzling $2.7 billion from the state-run National Iranian Oil Corporation during transactions intended to circumvent international sanctions on crude exports. Oil Minister Bijan Zangani said in 2014 that Zanjani used the Tajikistan branch of his own bank, First Islamic Investment Bank, to funnel the money out of Iran. The embezzlement occurred under the presidency of Mahmoud Ahmadinejad around the time when international sanctions against Iran peaked in 2012. Zanjani, who previously operated as an informal dealer at the oil ministry, was arrested in December 2013 after the election of President Hassan Rouhani and brought to trial last year. And a fight for control of London Stock Exchange Group PLC could get bare knuckled as a potential buyer's jockey for dominance in an industry that's quickly consolidating after LSE said it was a merger talks with Germany's Deutsche Börse AG, the two largest exchange owners in the world, CME Group Incorporated and Intercontinental Exchange Incorporated may step in with unsolicited offers. Reports say with four of the world's top five exchanges in the mix, a deal was the potential to scramble the industry. A purchase is expected to give CME a commanding presence in Europe after its struggle to succeed there on its own. If the IC prevails, the combined entity could put more than $10 billion in market cap between itself and CME, and an LSE Deutsche Börse merger would create a company big enough to challenge CME's market leading $32 billion valuation. While well, the markets are rallying from oil to metals, the European Central Bank is also set for rate decisions and China has just finished its NPC meeting. Let's bring in DWTV Channels TV correspondent Olaf Krieger to put these pieces of news together for us and how they are affecting the markets. Good afternoon, Olaf. Happy to see you again. Well, Olaf, the Chinese new five-year plan painted a 7% growth rate for the 2016 fiscal year, among other headlines from its weekend National People's Congress meeting. How much of this meeting is influencing the global markets this Monday?
Hello, love, if you're hearing me. Yeah, the question is, the Chinese new five-year plan painted a 7% growth rate for the 2016 fiscal year, among other headlines from its weekend National People's Congress meeting. So I'm asking, how much of this meeting is influencing the global markets this Monday? Well, the trouble with China is it's not only the weaker outlook for the Chinese economy, it's much more that the Chinese government has to rethink, has to rebuild the whole economy system so far. So, just to give you an example, there is an incredible overcapacity for example, in the steel industry. So the Chinese government has to organize to manage the move from Mao to a market. And international investors are apparently quite uncertain that it will go on very anytime soon. Now, love, the European Central Bank is set to take crucial interest rate liquidity and easing decisions next week. Take us through what's happening and will be happening in the countdown. Well, everyone here in Frankfurt is sitting on the edge of their chairs because everyone is desperately waiting what Mario Draghi, the president of the European Central Bank, is going to announce. Will there be more stimulus for the markets or not? We have to keep in mind that the interest rates in the, Euro, in the Eurozone are on an historical low already. So many investors and some analysts fear that the ECB, as well as the Federal Reserve in the U.S., is running out of munition, is running out of strategy, and probably sooner or later is running out of money. Right. Now, the, the markets are rallying from oil to metals to equities. Should investors buy into this rally, or is it a bull trap? I think it's a bull trap or something else <laughs> because we are going a bit down in today's trading here oh. in Frankfurt. That was a pretty much of a good start on this Monday in Frankfurt and shares went up. But until now, there is a little minus already in German top shares. And there are different reasons. The situation in China, as we already talked about, is still very uncertain. Everyone is waiting what the ECB is finally going to do to bring more stimulus into the markets. And last but not least, the Brexit is back in town and everyone is talking about will the UK finally leave the European Union and with which consequences. So well, let's have a look at what kind of trouble we can get into this week. <laughs> Right, thank you very much for your time, Olaf. We'll keep a tab on that um, Brexit story. Thank you, Olaf. Olaf Krieger, DWTV Channels TV correspondent reporting from Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Now, South Africa's President Jacob Zuma is set to begin a two-day state visit to Nigeria. What is the economic relations between the, the two countries? What is it like? We will talk about it shortly after the break. Do stay with us.